Touch my heart so I can see you're making me to be like you. You touch my eyes so I can see you better. You're making me to be like you. Father, I love you. Yes, I do. Jesus, I love you. Yes, I do. Father, I love you. Yes, I do. Jesus, I love you. Yes, I do. Father, I love you. Yes, I do. Jesus, I love you. Yes, I do. Father, I love you. Yes, I do. Jesus, I love you. Yes, I do. You touch my heart so I can know you more. You're making me to be like you. You touch my ears so I can hear you better. You're making me to be like you. You touch my eyes so I can see you more. You're making me to be like you. Father, I love you. Yes, I do. Jesus, I love you. Yes, I do. Father, I love you. Yes, I do. Jesus, I love you. Oh, Jesus. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your presence. 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 We thank you for your presence, Jesus. Transform our lives. Change our lives. Renew our lives. Change us with your word. Transform our destiny. Lift us up to another level. In the name of Jesus, let your glory be seen through us in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Father, we bless you. In Jesus' mighty name, we we'll pray. Amen. Amen. Give Jesus a big hand. As you. Hallelujah. So Peter walked on the water. So the second man to walk on the water, Peter walked on the water until fear came. And then he began to sink. Now, why? Simply because he lost sight of the word that he has got. So the word of God is as powerful as the faith you mix with it. And the word of God is as weak as the doubt you mix with it. Now, we've been uh, talking about the word of God. And thank you. We've been talking about the word of God and, uh, and the key of the breakthroughs that we are looking for. Um, there are so many things that we can find in the word of God actually if we decide to follow the word of God the way it should be. And I want you to understand that as a believer we live by the word. We live by the word. Not just the word that you study but we follow the voice of the spirit. That is key. The success of any life is in that life, the ability of that life to perceive the voice of God and to follow the voice of God. And the voice of God is the word of God. I mean, when we hear God speak to us, that is the word being made manifest to us. The Bible said, faith cometh by hearing. That means if there is a hearing, that means there is a voice. So faith cometh not by reading, but faith cometh 
by hearing. That means in our studying of the word, we must be open for the spirit to speak to us through the word of God. So when the spirit of God speaks to you, faith comes. But you see, faith does not come. Faith does not come. Thank you. Faith does not come by God speaking. Faith cometh by you hearing what God is what? Because God is constantly speaking. But faith does not come by God speaking. Faith cometh by hearing what the Lord is saying to you. So we need to understand this key that faith cometh by hearing and hearing. So until we give our ear to the voice of the Spirit, we will find out that we will struggle in faith. We must give our ear to the leading of the Spirit so that we don't struggle to walk by faith. And the Bible said, they that are led by the Spirit, they are the sons of God. So every believer must aspire to hear God. It is not for the prophets alone. It's not for the pastors alone. It is for every child of God to be able to perceive or decipher the voice of the Spirit. Jesus said, my sheep hears my voice. He didn't say after they have prayed, they will hear. It is natural as the sheep, as a child of God to hear your father. So, until we grow into the ability to perceive what heaven is saying to us at any point in time, we will find out that we will lack necessary faith to be able to carry out what heaven has instructed us to do. They that know their God shall be strong. You don't know somebody who that you can't hear. You don't really know somebody that you can't communicate with. Now, faith cometh by hearing. And it's by hearing. And that is why people like Abraham didn't have the Bible in those days, but they, they walked in faith. Because they heard God. People like Moses, they didn't have Bibles, but they heard God speak. The word, or the, the word that is God made manifest to them and spoke to them divine instructions that they followed. Of course, we know that their faith when was not made complete until Jesus came because Jesus is the author and the finisher. So it's only when, you know, Jesus came that the faith became complete. Now Christ became our faith. But we need to understand the importance of hearing the voice of the Spirit. It is the most wonderful thing in your life that will ever happen to you to be able to hear God and then be able to receive faith when you hear him do you understand why you are feeling so down and then suddenly out of the blues a man of God or somebody writes you or speaks to you and says to you this is what God is saying concerning your situation and suddenly the whole burden is lifted suddenly the, the fear is gone Suddenly, that, that, you know, feeling of rejection vanishes. What do you think happened? Because when you received that word from God, it came with it faith. It came with it confidence. It came with it something. Now, until we understand these things, we will always struggle to walk in faith and to have the faith of God. Now, look at what uh, Jesus said, I think, in Matthew chapter 4, verse 4. When the devil came to him and said, turn this bread into, turn this stone into bread. And look at what Jesus said. If you go to Matthew 4 verse 4, and Jesus answered and said, it is written. It is written. That means it's already sealed. It is written. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that what? Proceeded means continuous. Man shall live by every word that proceeded. That means you must be 
in tune with the proceeding voice of God. You must be in tune with what God is saying now. We live by what God is saying. So, as you are going, we keep, you know, listening to know what God is saying. We live by the voice. We live by the voice of the Spirit. That's why the, the Bible said the Word of God is a lamp unto my feet. Now, you need to understand this. Until, it, it didn't say man shall live shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that you read. No. He said by every word that proceeded out of where? The mouth of God. That is what you live by. By that ability of God to speak to you, speak to your ears, and for you to hear. Now, that ability to perceive the voice of the Spirit is something the Word of God gives to us. When you begin to hear the Word of God, and receive the word of God in your heart, you begin to know how the voice of God sounds like. How the voice of God looks like or feels like. You begin to know how the voice of God, you know, uh, how it manifests like, you know. I don't know how to put it, but I mean, when you've heard and heard and heard, you definitely know how it sounds like. The same way if you know your friends for some time, you, you learn how they sound, how they laugh. Or you can be acquainted to your dad's car. I don't know how many of you, you, you know, in those days when you were small, your dad can be turning from the second street and already you know your dad is coming, right? But when you hear the sound of the car, especially those days that cars are motor, not, you know, now, that cars are now, you know, good now. From second street, you can hear the sound of your dad's car. And you can tell your friends, my dad is, up, is coming home. And then after like, an, uh, 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 after like a minute, he shows up. That's to show that you've already, your ears are now accustomed to the sound of that car. Now, what am I saying here? Many times people say, I don't hear God. You do. It's just, you know, you don't, you don't know that that is the voice of the Spirit. You don't actually know. But each and every one of us, we do hear God. And why we must make this a responsibility and pray tonight and say, Father, may I hear you? Is because everything, every of your success in life is in the voice of the Spirit. And that is why so many people think, that, for example, that life is about jokes. I've, I've beginning to teach myself to obey the voice of the Spirit and not the voice of anything. You know, it's something you have to teach yourself. Even when you want to do something and you know that the Holy Ghost doesn't want you to do that, you know, no matter how you press pressure me for anything, I won't do anything except the Spirit says to me do it. So, uh, you know, why? Because I've realized that the success of life is dependent on the voice of the Spirit. Your response to the voice of the Spirit. So, we need to understand this so that we can approach the things of God in a very clear way. And we have direction in our lives. So here he said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. So if you want to live, hear God, right? If you want to live, you hear what the Spirit is saying. So God is still speaking, and God is still speaking through his Spirit. Now the Bible said in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 7, if you go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 7, um, I love uh, what the Bible said there. He said, uh, for we walk by faith and not what? He said, for we walk by, and faith cometh by what? So how can you walk by faith? But when you are in tune with what? The voice of the Spirit. Man shall not live by bread. So what does it mean to actually walk by faith? It's actually to live by the word. When you constantly act on the word of God. He said, we do not, we walk by faith and not by sight. So what, give, what gave us that faith? The word of God. Because faith comes by hearing. So you can understand and you can link the, uh, the, 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 the statements together. And then you begin to realize that there is no successful walking except there is faith. And you cannot have faith except you hear 
the voice of the Spirit. So, to be able to walk by faith and not by sight, you need to constantly hear the voice of the Spirit. When you do not hear the voice of God, that means fear will always be there. If you do not hear the voice of God, that means doubt will always be there. And here he's saying, we walk by faith and not by sight. That means if you don't hear the voice of the Spirit, you are prone to move by what you see. The circumstances of Cyprus, the circumstances of your bank account, the circumstances of your family. You walk by it. But when God says something contrary to what you are seeing in your family, faith comes and you are able to walk by faith. I don't know if I'm talking to somebody. You are able to walk by faith. What you don't see yet but you can call those things that are not as if they are. You can declare those things knowing, no, I'm, I'm not moved by what I'm seeing. I'm not moved by what I've heard. I'm not moved by the circumstances around me. I am moved by the voice of the Spirit because that voice supplied to me faith. Now, there is something I shared with them on yesterday in Left, in, in left Cape. Now, you need to understand the situation of the, the disciples when they saw Jesus walking on the water, the Bible said fear came upon them and said that's the spirit. And Jesus said I'm not the spirit. I'm not the spirit. It is me. Now you need to understand where they were. They were in fear. They said ah that is the spirit. Who is this person? Who is walking on the water? Fear gripped them. And then Jesus said it's me. And then Paul, uh, Peter said master if that is you tell me right? So Peter knew that if he could hear the voice of God, something would change. And immediately God, uh, Jesus said, hey, come. What happened? The same Peter that was fearful, boldness came for him to step out of the water. That means every word of God released to you will release faith. Every word of God released to you will release faith. And when faith is released, fear vanishes for you to walk by faith. Now, immediately he received the word come, he stepped out and walked on the water. And what happened? Until suddenly he disconnected from faith and focused by sight. That means he started looking around and saw the storm. And the Bible said he started what? Sinking. And we all know what happened. So keep looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. So if you don't keep your eyes on Jesus, listening to his voice, knowing what he's saying, that's why you need to stop listening to voices that doesn't matter. What people say about you doesn't matter. What anybody says is they are talking trash. It doesn't stop you. It doesn't limit you. I don't know why young people haven't learned that lesson. It's like somebody talking about me. You are wasting your, I mean, you are stunting yourself. Because I, I have a better understanding. You need to keep your ears to the voice of the Spirit. Keep your ears to what God is saying to you. Don't allow voices that doesn't matter to de determine your direction in life. Keep your ears to the voice of the Spirit. What God is saying to you, what God wants you to do, and immediately Peter heard, hey, come. Immediately he stepped on the water. And so Peter walked on the water. So the second man to walk on the water, Peter walked on the water until fear came. And then he began to sink. Now, why? Simply because he lost sight of the word that he has got. So the word of God is as powerful as the faith you mix with it. And the word of God is as weak as the doubt you mix with it. 